Phoenix xin thông báo, buổi webinar viết bài luận nội trú y khoa Mỹ sao cho hay sắp sửa bắt đầu trong ít phút nữa. Mọi người hãy ổn định chỗ ngồi và tắt mic để tránh các tập âm gây nhiễu ảnh hưởng tới người theo dõi. Chương trình sẽ diễn ra ngay bây giờ thôi, vì vậy mọi người hãy chuẩn bị cho mình một đường truyền thật là ổn định và chỗ ngồi thoải mái nhất để có thể theo dõi trọn vẹn webmina viết bài luận nội trú y khoa Mỹ sao cho hay nhé. Nếu mọi người nhìn thấy hình ảnh và nghe âm thanh rõ, hãy comment Z vào bot chat ngay bây giờ nha. Cảm ơn mọi người. Nếu các khán giả của chúng ta đều đã sẵn sàng để bắt đầu chương trình ngay bây giờ, mời mọi người hãy cùng nhau điên vào bot chat tên và chuyên khoa của mình để chúng ta làm quen với nhau nhé. Trước khi bắt đầu, mình xin phép được điểm qua một số lưu ý cho quý khán giả theo dõi webmina ngày hôm nay trên nền tảng Zoom. Trong suốt thời gian tham dự, đội ngũ kỹ thuật sẽ tắt micro của các bạn để không gian chung không bị ảnh hưởng. Khi có câu hỏi mong muốn trao đổi trực tiếp cùng diễn giả, các bạn vui lòng giơ tay hoặc điền vào trong khung chat của Zoom. Các hình ảnh chụp màn hình trong buổi webmina sẽ được sử dụng cho mục đích truyền thông lành mạnh nhằm lan tỏa các giá trị mà Phoenix hướng tới tới cộng đồng sinh viên y và bác sĩ Việt Nam. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our webinar, How to Write an Outstanding the U.S. Medical Residency Personal Statement from the Phoenix Medical Academy. I'm Thanh Trân and I will be the MC for our event today. Our speaker today will help share with us the spirits that help you write a personal statement to increase your chance of matching in today. U.S. Medical res Residency. During the webinar, if you have any question, please type in the chat box. So, without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to our host today. We have Dr. Christina Nguyen. She is a family medicine physician in the U.S. and the founder of the Phoenix Medical Academy. Please welcome Dr. Christina Nguyen. Thank you, Thanh Trang. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. It's great to have you all here tonight. Uh, I'm very honored to introduce to you our special speaker today, Dr. Ivan Abdouj. Dr. Abdouj is the former Associate Program Director of Family Medicine Residency at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. He's also a former Associate Professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Uh, he was uh, he also the delegate to the American Academy of Family Practice Congress of Delegates. Um, I'm also honored to share that Dr. Abduj is also serving on the advisory board for the Phoenix Medical Academy. He's also my respected mentor and dear friend. Uh, with about 20 years of experience working on the admission committee, reviewing about 600 applications and interviewing about 400 applicants, Dr. Abduj has great insights into what makes a personal statement stand out. It's truly a privilege for us to have you here today, Dr. Abduj. Please help me welcome Dr. Abduj. Please comment yes if you're excited to learn from him. And I will pass the mic to Dr. Abduj. Well, I'm grateful for the honor to uh, be with you all. I, this is my second time that I've had the opportunity to speak to this group. and. Uh, the first time around, I remember I was told to talk slowly, so I'm trying to do that this time. But please don't hesitate to let me know if I'm not being clear or if I'm speaking too quickly or anything like that, because I do want to have a good conversation with everyone. And I would also commend everybody here for their decision to be a part of uh, this academy. Uh, I've had the opportunity to learn more and more about what 
the academy is and does. And uh, I think that you are all very wise to uh, follow the lead of Dr. Nguyen. I've known her since she was in training and I've gotten to uh, observe uh, her as a practicing physician. Uh, and she's totally the one that you want to model yourself after. So thank you for having me today. Thank you, Dr. Abdush. So let's start with our presentation today. <clears throat> Um, please comment one in the chat box if you are ready to start. Okay. So if you are applying to the U.S. Medical Residency Program this season, if you are interested in pursuing the U.S. Medical Residency in the near future, um, or if you are learning about the U.S. Medical Residency um, personal statement, learning how to write it, learning what it is about, uh, wondering how to start writing the personal statement and unsure what to include, what's not to include, and unsure if your personal statement is good enough, then this webinar is for you. So first, let's start with why um, we need to care about the personal statement. Why is it important? There's a saying that a great personal statement cannot save an otherwise weak application, but a poor one could hurt an otherwise strong application. So Dr. Abdush, would you like to share a little bit about this? Yes, that, that is a very powerful statement. Um, a lot of people think that it's all about test scores and performance measures and all of that. And while it is important that a person has good medical knowledge and has shown the ability to perform. Uh, it's really about the person that makes or breaks whether uh, you succeed. So if if you can let the people know, because remember the people at my end don't know you. All we see is facts and figures about each individual, but we don't know who are you. And this is an opportunity for you to tell us, this is who I am, not just what I've done. And this is the thing that actually gets our attention, even though you know, if you don't have the scores and the grades that you need, we still wanna know who you are. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, the test score can get you uh, passed through the screening process, but right. this is uh, what is going to determine whether you can get an interview invitation and later on whether you are selected uh, for the position. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for the next part, we are going to talk about three common mistakes when writing a medical residency personal statement and what to do about it, how to avoid these mistakes and what to do instead. So I'll let Dr. Abdu um, start with a mistake number one. Yeah, the reason you write this is again, to let us know who you are and why we should even want to talk to you. And so if you don't do if you just repeat the, the biggest mistake that I see at my end, remember that I'm talking from this perspective of the person reading these. And we get hundreds of them. And so, you know, we have to read through all of them. And it doesn't, we don't want to see you repeat what's already in your uh, list of accomplishments in your CV, your curriculum vitae that says, here's all the things I've done uh, in, in school. We want to know who are you as a person. And so we don't want you to rewrite all of your grades and your uh, performance measures. We don't want to hear about arrogance. Well, it, there's a fine line that bragging about your qualities is a careful uh, fine line because we do want to know what you've accomplished in your life. And it's hard to sometimes talk about yourself without 
seeming like you're bragging about yourself. And that's where it helps. We'll come to later on having other people read your uh, the piece that you've written. But we do want to know about who you are. So you have to tell us about yourself, but just be careful that it's not bragging. Um, and don't just give us a diary. You know, first I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this. Uh, don't turn a bad opportunity that you've had in life, you know, the life challenges into a reason that we should have pity for you. So the sob stories are very much something that we just turn our head away from. Uh, everybody reads about, you know, I want to be a doctor because I want to help people and I want to do good things and all that. Well, that's fine, but that's everybody says that. So the, the cliches or the reasons that you want to be a doctor need to be personal to you. What happened in your life that gave you that reason to want to do it? Um, and the biggest one that really knocks a reader out of their chair is when it just goes on and on and on about it's, it's a long rambling uh, write up that eventually you just get tired of reading it and just set it aside and go, I'm done with that one. Yes, thank you, Dr. Afjush. I think these are very important things that a lot of time we get lost in the process of writing. And these are some of the um, criteria that when we reviewing, uh, during the process of reviewing our personal statement, we want to look at these and see if uh, our statements fall into any of these categories, any of these groups or make any of these mistakes. So what are the purposes of the personal statement? So the, the, those are really three big items. If you don't include these, you've really missed an opportunity to display your, your abilities to serve the program and for the program to serve you. Everybody, uh, comes with the idea that they want to be in the program, but why should we listen to you versus everybody else? And so that's the thing you want to show us is why are we in, interested in you? Why do you want to do our particular specialty? What is it about this specialty that drew you to it? And why do you want to do our program in particular? Um, I should throw in one that, that we hadn't mentioned before, and that is if you're looking to come to the U.S., why? Why do you want to come here uh, in addition to those things? Because we're going to see, again, hundreds of people saying, if they're all saying the same thing, then why should, you know, what would help separate out one from another? And this is your opportunity to, to stand alone by being very clear on these, op, these points. Mm -hmm. So um, the goal for a personal statement is to have a concise and clear structure um, to answer those three questions. And the fourth one that Dr. Abuj mentioned is how, why in particular the US, uh, this one might not be obvious for the students who are already in the U.S., but uh, especially for medical students from other countries, uh, doctors from other countries, that would be a very important thing to include. Yes. So let's go into the detail about these questions. So question number one, why you, why you should be selected? So what should we do in this part? Yeah, this is one where you, you talk about your experiences you don't say i'm a hard worker you give examples of what you've done that actually demonstrates that you're a hard worker you don't say that i'm a person a people person 
you give examples of what you've done that demonstrates uh, what uh, examples of you being a people person you don't uh, just list a bunch of your accomplishments. You talk about how those accomplishments have uh, created uh, growth and development in yourself. So you use the term that you see on the screen there, the I language. It's not about the, the things you've done. It's what those things have done for you and how you have grown and so in that example, you don't say that that shadowing uh, a doctor showed me what it's like to be a physician. You say, because I shadowed that person, I became something. You know, so in this case, I gained a better understanding about the roles and responsibilities and demands of a physician. Um, it doesn't really matter if you do something. It's what is it that you did? What did what you did do for you? And keep it personal. Don't don't talk in terms of like robots. Talk like a person. Hmm. And if you if you have certain hobbies or interests, this one isn't necessarily a must. But if you have certain hobbies or interests or activities that you've done that somehow you can tie into your ability to perform better as a physician, that would be helpful. For example, if you were on a sports team, you know, how did that teach you better cooperation with team members and uh to realize that the group is more important than the one person, me, or things like that, where you coordinate with other people and you learn to negotiate and learn to, to uh, understand roles and responsibilities. Those kinds of things uh, can help if, if you have those. Now, if you don't, if you don't have uh, anything like that you don't have to include that but if you do make it make use of that mm -hmm. That's and uh, go ahead oh go ahead i was just saying yeah why this specialty is that's that's a tough one because some people uh start talking about the specialty instead of about themselves and that's the part where it says make it personal by incorporating your experiences because it's really about not about the specialty it's about you why do you choose that specialty and yeah there it shows on the screen uh i didn't wasn't thinking ahead i'm happy to see the first line this is about you not the things you've done. It's not about the specialty. It's about you in regard to the specialty. And so that example, to say that I was a radiology technician uh, is, is a sort of an accomplishment and some background and, and it tells about your experience and stuff. But more importantly, it was to say that because I was a radiology technician and it was a gratifying job, it made clear to me that I want to go the next step or to further my knowledge and skills and actually become a radiologist. So that's it's because of something I've done, what that did with me as a person. And that's what you're aiming for here. So, you know, again, the program, you need to know about the program in order to know why do you want the program. So many people write the same message to every program. By the way, you know, you can write a separate personal statement for different programs, or if you're applying for more than one specialty, you can write a different personal statement for each specialty. So it doesn't have to be, it's although it's more work to write more than one 
statement, you want to make it very personal. And so if you're applying to the program that I'm with, I want to know that you've actually you're you're familiar with what our program offers so that we know that what when you say I want to come to your program for these specific reasons, then that would help to uh, discover whether or not we have what you want and if you have what we want. And so you need to be specific about aspects of the program that you're aware of and how those suit you and how you would suit those. It's also important for you to have some idea what you want to do in your when you when you're finished. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say that not everybody knows exactly what they want to do. And so that's okay. But if you think that you want to be in the city versus the country, or you want to teach, or you want to do research or specific things that you hope to do, even though you don't know exactly what those are. And that's also useful when you say, why this program? Well, because your program has certain elements that really are in line with what I want to do. And what I want to do is in line with the elements of your program. And that's, <laughs> this one here is dear to my heart, to be positive and enthusiastic. So many of these personal statements, frankly, are boring to read. And I don't mean to be mean about it, but some of me start to read it and just goes on and on and on about things that a computer could have written. There's not no personality to it at all. The ones that are fun to read and you want to actually read it a second time is the ones that are positive and enthusiastic and specific. And, you know, it's like a person talking to me and not just somebody writing some generic uh, paper that is for the whole world to read. It's, it's like they're talking to me specifically and they're, and they're positive about it. We, most of us really like to be around positive people. And so in this example, I mean, the wording itself, you can see it's about positivity a greater joy witnessing a child's birth and the bonding between the physician and patient. I mean, those are very positive things and, and, and enthusiastic. And so because I want to do obstetrics and your program is strong in obstetrics, then that makes me excited to be a part of your program. And that's what you want to convey. It's really like you're talking to a person and, and being excited, you know, show that excitement. <laughs> I'm going to let Dr. Nguyen talk about this because I'll start laughing. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that's a really good example to show that you really understand the program, you understand yourself, and how you know that uh, you might be a good fit for this program. So I found this meme. It says um, on the top uh, picture you see writing a generic personal statement and give it to all of the programs. Uh, the second one is you have a corny story about your love for medicine. Um, and then the third one is uh, writing about how much you like the program benefits and culture of the hospital. But the master of all is <laughs> when you start talking the residency director Twitter and Facebook and learn about their cat's favorite name and everything <laughs> that they like and don't like. So uh, I'm not saying that you should do that, but... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's stalking is not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When she showed me that, I, I was laughing. I thought, I don't think I'm going to be able to talk my way through that one. This one is also, this is why we're going to again come to a, a thing about having other people read it before you turn it in because. 
some of these go on and on and on. You ask a simple question and you get a really ugly, long, complex answer. So if somebody was to say, you know, what, what kind of ice cream do you like? This example is just, you know, the person goes on and on and on. I've loved ice cream for as long as I can remember. I've been to dozens and dozens of ice cream shops all over the country and on and on and on like that. And really the only thing you needed to say was chocolate is my favorite flavor. You don't need to say all this other stuff. And when when we talk about concise, this is a big deal. Your personal statement, in my opinion, should not be any longer than one page. Uh, some of them have been you know, two or even three pages long. I don't know who told them to do that, but I can't even stay interested that long to read something that enormous. Uh, some people would say it's 500 to 700, maybe 800 words is all you want to do. And so that comes back to this piece because one thing is it's, so long that you totally lose the reader's interest and two is because the answer is somewhere in all of that but it's all in camouflage because you have so many words that i have to actually hunt for the answer that i'm looking for so don't don't think that you know the more i say the more clear i am that is not true sometimes you need to write it down and then ask yourself, how could I say this in a shorter way? So let's, um, so that was a really, really good um, mistakes that um, definitely a lot of people make and how to avoid those, uh, that, uh, those aspects of that mistakes. So we're gonna move on to mistake number two. And this is very important because um, in our life, we definitely have times when we mess up, we have things that we're not too proud about, but it's important for the uh, admission committee to uh, know about, and we need to be um, forthcoming. We need to bring it up and talk about it instead of trying to hide it. And so the question is, how do we talk about it? Yeah, when, when you have a problem with these red flags, as we call them, own it. You know, this is, this is my issue, and I need to take ownership of that issue and, and deal with it. So, again, number one, take responsibility for the mistakes. And number two, then, what are you going to do about that mistake? Because we all make them. But again, number three, keep positive about it. Because yeah, I've, I've always said that in, in medicine, if you haven't hurt a patient, you're, you're probably not treating patients. Eventually, something's going to happen where you did something that was actually a mistake. And, and somehow the patient is hurt by that. The question is, what are you going to do when that happens or if you uh, make a mistake in your life what are you going to do with it because you're going to make mistakes and this is an opportunity to show us you know how do you deal with adversity when it happens and in in case like this you know if you didn't do well uh, in part of your training what did you do about that This one is is probably the most common uh, when you have a bad score. You know, if you're taking your uh, steps uh, exam, uh, step one, and you don't do well in this particular example, you know, it's it's pretty typical. And this has happened in real life fairly often where a person took their exam and they didn't do well. Okay, that that's devastating. I mean, everybody in medical training is used to being 
at the top of their class going in. You wouldn't be in medical training if you weren't an intelligent, good student who does well. But eventually, you know, some of us have to be at the bottom of the class and we're not used to doing that. And so it can be very devastating when a person takes an exam that's so important and doesn't do well on it. That never stopped me as a reader from wanting to know more. And that's the thing, some people disqualify themselves because, oh, I blew the test, I'm, I'm out of it. No, what are you gonna do about it? And so in this case, you know, this example, I felt like my career was over, but then I read that 72% of people who fail step one still get into residency. Okay, there's the first thing that the person did is they, they looked for, okay, now what do I do? And then they discover there's still hope for me. And so after the devastation, I was able to work my way through how to improve that. I retook the test and my results were good. So the fact that they failed the test the first time around, uh, for me as a reader said, so, I'm not going to do well the first time on everything I do, but what are you going to do to make, make that better? And that is a story about a person's integrity and a story about a person's desire uh, to actually finish the race. I think this is a really good example. A lot of time it's really hard to talk about these um, we don't know what's the right way to do it. And sometimes we feel like we might want to tell a story about how um, something happened to us or life events happened, but maybe those are true. Maybe there's something happened in your life that caused you to be distracted and did not study well for the test and you had a bad outcome but how to say it in a way that doesn't shift that responsibility to somebody else or an external life event um, is important because um, you definitely want to own uh, and say that you know you are responsible for your decisions and what you do uh, instead of saying oh because of this then i this um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that. I think that's a very tricky thing to do. Well, when people blame shift, you know, I didn't do well because I had a really bad professor or my score was bad because, uh, you know, everybody was uh, uh, pushing me to a place that I didn't want to be. You know, my family keeps pushing me and all that stuff. Those sorts of whiny kinds of, uh, if somebody else made me do poorly. That is, is a real uh, red flag for me that when they start blaming everybody else or looking for sympathy, that that tells me that their character is not such that they will, they won't really succeed as a physician because they have uh, a weak character and not that I don't think that they're good people. They're, they may well be good people, but you know, I think that they'll be struggling in medicine if they uh, can't accept uh, the character nature that we need to have. And that is to own our, our own actions and to deal with our own actions rather than use those uh, difficult times as an opportunity to get sympathy from people or to blame other people. Mm -hmm. It's a character thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the next mistake we have is start writing your personal statement too late. And we're going to go into this. Yeah, these, <laughs> the, the, the number of, uh, 
when I read some of these, if you hear, you know, this actually deals with all the stuff we've talked about before. If you write one time and turn it in, I can guarantee it's not going to be a good one because you think you wrote stuff in a clear and concise way, but the reader doesn't see it that way. And so it would be really important for you to have to write it and then have other people read it and tell you how it came across to them and to also uh, use tools and other people to pick up on mistakes you made in your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation and all that. Those aren't necessarily deciding points, but they are, you know, like death by a thousand cuts kind of thing where when the language is poor or the spelling is poor, you have to wonder, did this person really care about this enough to get it right? And so you don't want to just turn in the first thing you wrote. I will say one thing that's not on here that just occurs to me as I'm talking. Sometimes it's hard to start writing because it's you just don't know where to go and how to do it and stuff. The best thing you can do is just start writing. And then once you have it on, it's called breaking the power of white, white being a piece of paper and just get something on there so that there's, so it's not all white anymore. Start writing something. And then after you have your thoughts on the paper, then start doing the corrections. <clears throat> or trimming it down or you know i wanted to say this but it's not really clear so you can then rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it it's it's a very long process if you want to do it the right way and so yeah don't don't just write it once and say i'm done and turn it in i can guarantee you it's not going to kind of get through um and do have people as many as you can have people read it and give you feedback and listen to their feedback and deal with it. And that's what that actually is referring to. You may or may not agree with what they say, you know, if, if their feedback is, you know, okay, that, that's not it. Well, then discuss it with them. Don't just shrug it off. Uh, talk to people about how did it come across? What did what did it mean to you when you read this? You know, did this sound, you know, whiny? Did this sound uh, positive? And all the things we've talked about before, and let them feed it back to you so that you can then make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And it, Dr. Nguyen was, you know, pointing these tools out to me. I've actually heard of them, but I've never used them. So why don't you go ahead and talk about those? Mm -hmm. those so um, Dr. Abdush mentioned about the importance of having correct grammar and spelling. Uh, those are just the basic things that every piece of writing should have. So if you are learning English and you are having a lot of worry about uh, making sure your vocabulary um, it's good, your grammar is correct, then I recommend using a tool called Grammarly. Um, it is uh, an app. Um, how many people here have heard of Grammarly? If you've heard of Grammarly, uh, please comment one in the chat box uh, so we can interact with each other. Um, so Grammarly is a very helpful tool. I have been using this for over a year and it helps me a lot because I do a lot of writing uh, so uh, it is a it is an um, application where you can install it into your Chrome browser and if you write something in English if it's wrong then um, it will uh, show red uh, and then it will give you some suggestions so I really recommend start using this um, it will help you to learn English uh, it will help you to write um, more professional uh, grammar uh, correctly and um, the style can also be better as well. 
Uh, another tool is Oxford Learners uh, Thesaurus. Uh, this one will help you to use some uh, use words vocabulary that are not um, that are not generic, that are specific to what you want to say. So you know, if we say something, oh, I had a fun time. Um, fun is a very commonly used word that sometimes is, is too generic. Um, so these are tools for you to use. Um, so uh, this bring us to the end. Um, the last uh, tips here is to focus on the introduction and the conclusion of your essay. Uh, make sure that uh, these two, <clears throat> um, you make a good impression with the introduction and then you bring the attention back, the uh, story back. Um, in the conclusion. Uh, these are usually the hardest parts to write. So um, I totally agree with Dr. Abduj where uh, you can just start writing a first draft and just write anything that comes to your mind. And then after you organized it, you edit it, you have a good body with maybe three or four paragraphs, and then you go back uh, to write an introduction and the conclusion. And wrap up your essay that way. Um, any additional tips on that, uh, Dr. Abduj? No, it, it is just, you know, if you want to get somebody's attention, you have to start off with something attention grabbing, and that's the way to start. Uh, think about a story to tell, and then end with the story so that you can see that there, there's been a pattern here. Mm -hmm. But just, just start saying, I just want to be a doctor because it's really cool. That's not a good start, you know. Talk about an experience you had that started you on this path. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to the end. Um, I want to um, share an opportunity for our audience here today. If you are writing your personal statement and if you would like us to um, review your personal statement, you can send uh, you can send uh, your personal statement to us um, at the email written on the screen there. And uh, Dr. Abdouj and I uh, may review your personal statements and to provide some feedbacks. Um, and we may select one uh, personal statement to review completely from the beginning to the end. Um, the rest of those statements, we may provide some um, partial feedback. But um, that is an opportunity that if you would like to take advantage of, um, I would highly recommend to do so. So if anybody has any question um, for us, please type it in the chat box or raise your hand or turn on your mic and uh, we have a few minutes to go over some of the question and answers. Okay, so it looks like we have um, a question here. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are using Grammarly as well. That's wonderful. So uh, the question is, why you? Sometimes I just find myself as a normal student. I am not smart. I don't work uh, harder. I don't have any skill that really set me apart from other people. Do we have to include something unique about ourselves, and how can we find out that? I really appreciate if you can give me some advice. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be smarter or harder working. What it is is more about why would the program want you? What is it about you that fits the program and what is it about the program that fits you? For example, uh, I want to be a research physician. I, I'm more about research than patient care. Well, then you don't want to try and convince a program who is all about patient care, nothing about research to try and take you. You're, you're really not trying to show that you're some sort of superhero. You're just trying to show why you are suitable to the program and the program is suitable to you as well. Um, if you wanna be a rural 
physician who delivers babies and does procedures and everything, well, you want to make sure that the program provides that kind of training. And, and so we were a match. It's really not about you being, uh, everybody that applies is a good, is a good applicant because you've all gotten this far. You know, you're smart enough to have gotten this far. You've worked hard enough to get this far. You've shown enough determination to get this far. I get that. But why our program and why should we look at you? And and so it's about the connection. I don't know, does that answer the question, I hope? And another thing, uh, one good tip that um, I usually tell students um, is that you want to write down your experiences as you are living them. For example, if you're yes. volunteering, if you do a research project, if you um, go on a clinical rotation, you see something that day that really uh, touch you, uh, really make an impression on you, you want to write it, have like a diary of like these little uh, events that happens and just uh, start very early. You can start at uh, first year medical students um, or even if you are um, not in the medical field yet, uh, just write down and then keep that by the time you sit down to write your medical, um, your personal statement, you already have something to go back to. And um, sometimes our memory fails us. Sometimes we feel like we don't have anything special or interesting. But if you have this list of experiences and activities, you can go back and look at them and say, oh yeah, that was interesting. I remember that day and that may give you some ideas. So Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a few more questions. Uh, when can we start writing the personal statement? When we prepare for step one or step two? Do you wanna take that question? There's never a wrong time to start, except if it's too late. Um, you don't wanna start it you know, three days before it's due. You could start writing it today and then just, you know, in, you know, start out almost like a diary form and then start condensing it down to the stuff that you want to present to those who are going to read it. But it's never too early. Uh, it's just that you have to remember if you start early, the story's not over yet because you still, if you start writing it three years before it's time to turn it in, well, there's going to be a lot going on in those three years that you might want to include. So I think the best way is what Dr. Nguyen just talked about is maybe keep a journal or a diary and then pull pieces out of that. And that could be like starting your personal statement in that way. Um, yes, I think, I think that's a, a great idea. And we have the next question. If I apply for a position in a hospital where I have not done a clinical rotation in the past, um, so how, how do I know about that institution or program? That's not easy, but it's important. Uh, you can get information from the institution, uh, either a lot of them have information online or you can actually uh, write to them and ask them to send materials to you uh, that uh, cover that information. Or you can even ask if there's someone you can talk to and actually have a conversation with the person uh, in that institution to get a little clearer understanding. And I think, you know, honestly, that's probably the most difficult one. And yet I think that's the most valuable one. People, it can you can learn more by talking to somebody than you can by reading um and that's why we do interviews i mean because while your personal statement gives us a lot of information about you your tone of voice your attitude and all that stuff comes out in the conversation well same thing goes with with uh information about an institution they can write down all their attributes, but if you have questions, well, you can't just ask your questions to this online or piece of paper description. You can have a conversation with somebody. So 
I think the ideal way is if you're really serious about the location is intriguing to you, well then start asking questions if you can of an individual from that institution. But next best thing is read about it online or, or write to them for information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a question about how to write uh, a conclusion. That's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. The conclusion, I think that the, what, that last slide that you saw, I think is, is the best way. Um, when you start off with a story, uh, I'll just pull one out of the air. My mother had uh, a disease that, you know, I, I watched the doctor deal with it. And I was intrigued by how kind he was and yet how, you know, meticulous with, you know, the, the technology and all that stuff. And so, you know, when I saw all this stuff, it really got me to thinking about, I would like to do that too. And then you go through the rest of your personal statement and then circle back at the end and go. And so as a result of, you know, what I've done so far, I still hope to be the doctor that I saw with my mother. I mean, my own, my own true story was I was a medical student. I was planning to go into either chest surgery or ophthalmology, I couldn't decide which one. And then I got sick and I went to student health and this family doctor was in the student health clinic and his attitude and his mannerisms and he just, when he walked in the room, I just felt better. There was something about him and I thought that's what I want to do. Well, later on, I thought, oh, that was just, you know, a little excitement but then I got sick again later on in medical school I went back and that very same doctor was the guy that came to see me and I got that very same feeling and I thought no I want to be a family doctor that was my story and so you know if you think about an experience that you had that really made you want to go into whatever specialty that you're looking at tell that experience and then at the end bring it back to that so in my case because of this person i changed my whole attitude about what i want to do i started gearing my training toward that and in the end i want to be that doctor does that make sense yeah i love that story i think that really demonstrates um, a very beautiful way to do it and meaningful way, I, I would remember that story. I, you, you would have made an impression on whoever read that personal statement. Yeah, and that's the thing is just make it personal. You have to be vulnerable. You know, we all have this feeling like we have to be very professional and, you know, make our necktie really tight and our, you know, our jewelry really sparkle or whatever. No, just be professional, be personal. You can still be professional, but still be personal with people. You know, professionalism is is uh, sometimes a barrier rather than a good thing, because sometimes it throws up a wall where people won't talk to you the same way they would if they if you were their friend. And that's the same thing with a personal statement. Be be vulnerable and just say, "Here's who I am." And, and here's who I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's um, a very insightful tip for all of us to always remember. And uh, same thing when we are a doctor, when we talk to a patient, we want to be um, approachable, we want to be <coughs> and personal. Um, so that's really, really wonderful. Uh, I have another question here. Thank you for your excellent talk. I want to ask about the issue, why specialists? Um, I need to describe my characteristic that show I will be suitable for that specialty, don't I? Sort of. It's not about your characteristics, it's about your desire more than anything. And that again, takes us right back to what we just finished talking about. Why do you want to be that? Mm -hmm. 
it's not about what you what skills you possess because if you had those skills you don't need to do a residency because you already have the skills it's not about the skills it's about the desire why do you want to do that have you seen have you been involved with that you know i'm going to take it back a step before in medical school uh, admissions one of the things I always wondered is, do they even know what they're getting into? Have you been in a hospital? Have you at least followed a doctor around or done some sort of medical exposure? Because if not, person says, I really want to be a doctor. Well, if you've never done anything around doctors, how do you know that? Well, it's the same sort of a thing now as if you say you want to be a brain surgeon, why? You know, what is it that about brain surgery that has your attention? And it's not about what skills you possess. It's what's your motivation? Why would I think that you're actually going to complete the training? You may get halfway through and go, I don't like this and move on. I want to know, you know, why do you want to do it? And, and uh, why us? That's really all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> And I have a question about um, submitting the personal statement. So thank you again for organizing this workshop, which is wondering when we are submitting our personal statement for review and corrections. Uh, so you can, if you are writing your personal statement now for this season, um, we would be uh, willing to accept your personal statement in the next two weeks um, for next seasons we're gonna give an announcement for next season in the near future but for this season it will be in the next two weeks how many people here are planning to apply um, this season can you type one if you're applying for this season and how many people are applying for next season if you're applying for next season, please type two. So I see a one. What's your name? Can you uh, share with us your name? Oh, I see another one. Wonderful. Okay. Do you want to share with us? Um, oh, Dr. Mingo. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself and Share a little bit, turn on your camera and your microphone. Okay. Then I see another person. Okay. Anybody planning to apply next season? Okay. All right. So um, we will have information for next season available in the near future. Okay, I will uh, pass the mic back to our MC for today. So this concludes the webinar how to write an outstanding the US medical residency personal statement. Thanks Dr. Abuse and Dr. Christina Nguyen for your inspiring presentation. It's well comprehensive and gave me and on the audience much better insight on writing a compelling personal statement. On behalf of Phoenix, thank you, thank you all for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed this presentation. Phoenix really wants to hear honest feedback from you, so please take a few minutes to fill out the feedback from Rovai in the podcast. Phoenix will try our best to bring you more and more quali qualitative and helpful events in the future. So please continue to follow us and support us for our upcoming projects. Mọi người ơi, vậy là chúng ta đã cùng nhau đi qua các nội dung của webinar viết bài luận nội trú y khoa Mỹ sao cho hay rồi. Mong rằng buổi webinar đã mang lại thật nhiều ý nghĩa cho các bạn. Thay mặt Phoenix, mình xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người đã dành thời gian tham gia buổi webinar ngày hôm nay. Học viện Phượng Hoàng rất mong được lắng nghe những phản hồi chân thành từ các bạn. Vì vậy, hy vọng các bạn có thể dành thời gian hoàn thành phong khảo sát ngắn được đính kèm trong podcast nhé.
before we say goodbye, I want to invite Dr. A Dr. Adil and Dr. Tristina Nguyen to take a photo with all of us. So on the audience, please turn on your webcam for souvenir photographs. Mời mọi người hãy cùng nhau mở webcam lên để chúng ta sẽ cùng nhau chụp một cái những bức ảnh lưu niệm cùng Phoenix ạ. À. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdush, for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure for us, all of us here. We've learned from <coughs> you. And I think that uh, all your advice and suggestions will make a big difference. I um, hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I wish you all well. Okay. So let's send some hearts for Dr. Abdush, oh. and we're going to take a photo together, okay? Whoever can turn on webcam, please do so. Thank you so much. I see a lot of people, very happy, beautiful faces. Okay, thank you so much. And um, we'll see you at the next event. Have a good day and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.